a very good day to all of you. Computer Shiksha is supported by Until now, you have learned about all the options of the view menu. You will now learn about the advanced options of the other menus. Before we begin today's class, let us revise what you have learned in the previous class. Can you tell what type of characters you cannot remove or delete using the backspace or delete keys? Such characters are called non-printing characters and although you can make these characters visible on your document, when you print your document, but these characters do not get printed. Can you tell how you may remove shading from the field name? Using field name, when you insert time, date, etc. in your page, then these have shading on them. And you need to use the field shading option to remove the shading. Can you tell in which Mino will you find the field shading option? Field shading option is part of the view Mino. Do you know what happens with the change option? With the use of the change option, you can see changes made to your document. If any user makes any changes in your document, then you will be able to see the same and they appear in different formatting. Now, all of you first switch on your computers and then open the writer file. Let us now begin today's class. Let us see what will you be learning today. In today's class, you will learn about some of the options of the insert menu and the formatting menu which will include formatting mark, section, footnote and endnote, caption, text frame, horizontal rulers, files, movie and sounds section, autocorrect, alignment, arrange, flip, and about the group. Now, all of you type out the paragraph being shown to you. Have you all typed out the paragraph? You will now learn about the section option of the insert menu. Using the section option, you can divide your paragraph or lines into a section, meaning you can get them in a text box. Besides getting them into a box, you can also divide the line or paragraph into columns. And you can also apply an indent or margin. You can also change the background color for this text. Let us watch the video to know more about how the section option is used. In this video, we are going to learn how we can make use of the section option. To make use of the section option, first you need to select the text on your page for which you want to create the sections. As the word applies, implies, the section of this text can be put into different areas. So we go to the insert menu and select the section option. When we select that, a box opens as you can see in the video and there are many options here, section, columns, indents, backgrounds, footnote, endnote. First you can type in a name for the section that you are creating. For instance, we have said CS. Then we go to the columns option and you can define whether you want one column for your section or two columns, three columns or what kind of columns you want. 
So for instance, we have selected two columns with equal spacing. Then you can also define the separator line. What kind of a separator line? What thickness should be there between the sections? Then let's look at the other options. You can also define the height of the separator line. Then we look at indents. As you already know, indents means you can keep spacing from the margin to your text, both in the beginning and at the end of the text. So before section or after the section, you can use the up arrows or the down arrows to define the indent that you want to keep. And it is also shown to you in the preview window. Next is the background. With background, you can change the color of the background of your section. So you select the color that you want and then click on insert to insert that color on your section. And you can also use footnote and endnote. So as you can see, the color has been applied as the background and your text has been divided into two sections, two columns as you had asked for and there is a separator line. So this is how you can use the section option on your writer page. Let us now learn about the footnote and endnote options of the insert menu. Do you know what is the use of the footnote and endnote? The footnote functions like a link. Whenever you insert a footnote, then it references the bottom of the page to the place where you have linked the footnote to, using which you can directly get to the footnote. However, with the end note, instead of on each page, you will see them on the end page. For more information on the use of the footnote and endnote, let us watch the video. Let us now watch this video and understand how the footnote and endnote are applied and used. So as you can see, you have the writer text on your page and you want to apply a footnote or an endnote. For this, you will need to take your pointer or the cursor to the Mino bar to insert. We have already created an open bracket and an end bracket. And there we have gone and uh, uh, chosen the option for footnote and note. You can see there are two options here. Numbering, which can be automatic or character can define it. And the type, which can be footnote or end note. So, Initially, by default, automatic and footnote is selected. So we cl click on OK. And you can see that in the bracket that we had applied, a number is inserted. And at the end of this page, at the end of this section, a footnote space has been created where we are now writing some note. So we have typed wor world, world Wide Web or anything that you like to place in this footnote, you can type here. So at the place where you have applied the footnote, a link has been established. You can see that the number one is written within that bracket. And whenever you click on that, it will directly take you to the footnote. Let us now see if you want to apply an end note, which will come on the last page. You again type an open bracket and an end bracket and your cursor is inside the bracket, go to insert option, go to the footnote end note section, selection, select that and now let's keep the numbering as character. So once we keep the numbering as character, we can type any character or a symbol to apply for this end note. So we choose what symbol we want to use and type it here and then from the type we select end note. 
then we can click on OK and you will see that in that bracket that we had created, that symbol that we chose has been apply, applied to refer or to link to the end node. And on the last page, you see the same symbol appearing and you can type out your end note here. So here we are typing hypertext or whatever language you want or whatever note you want as an end note, you can type it here. So when you go back or scroll back onto your writer page text, you can see that these symbols have got inserted within those brackets and they link directly to the footnote or the end note. So this is how when you take the cursor there, it changes to a hand and as soon as you click either on the end note or the footnote, it goes, it takes you to that end note or footnote. This is how you will use the end note or footnote on your writer page. Let us now learn about the caption option. Can you tell what happens with the use of the caption option? The caption option can only be applied to image, graphics or drawings etc. Using the caption, you can write some text or a summary about your drawings as per your thinking which will come inside a box. Let us watch the video and learn how the caption option is used. With this video, we will now learn how we can use the caption option for our objects, drawings, etc. in the writer page. So to use the caption option, we need to bring our pointer to the insert option. When you click there, right now you can see that the caption is not highlighted because we don't have any drawings or objects in our file, in our writer file. For that, Let's open the gallery option, click on the gallery option and select one of the images. You can scroll up and down. Let's select something from computers. You can scroll even in the category to see different types of symbols available and choose one which we like. Click on that and then use the right click and use the insert copy option to get the drawing on your writer page. Now, this has got inserted where your cursor was on the writer page. Now you go to the insert option, caption is highlighted, choose caption, a box opens, you can give a caption here. Now you can write about whatever uh, about this object or the drawing that you want to write. So we are writing computer is an electronic machine. You can write whatever you want. Computer is an electronic machine which makes our work easier. Once we have written the caption or whatever text we want to give as the caption. There are options available here, properties. So the category is drawing. If you click on the drop down button, different categories are available. So you can use it for drawing, for images, tables, etc., or for text. So ours is drawing. Then the other option is numbering. There are in the drop down button, you will see many options available for the type of numbering that you want. So you can choose one which you like. And then there is a separator. So you can choose a separator that you like to use. It could be blank space or a symbol as a separator. So you can see as soon as you choose that. It shows in the preview window. So we can choose this one now as a small hyphen. And then we click on OK. 
and you can see that the caption gets added to your drawing just below your drawing in a text box the caption along with the separator and the numbering style that you have chosen gets added if you want you can close the gallery from here by clicking on the dots this is how you can use the caption option for your drawings images tables etc on your writer page let us now learn about the bookmark option do you know why we use the bookmark option bookmark option is very useful one and just like when you read a book, here also you can apply a bookmark at the place where you were last reading your document. We will also now learn about cross-referencing. Can you tell why cross-reference is used? Using cross-reference in any big document in which there are many paragraphs, and you need to scroll many times makes reading easier for you. Cross reference also works on bookmark, endnote, footnote, or the header and footer section also. Let us see this video and learn the use of the cross reference. Watch this video now to learn the use of bookmark and cross references. In this writer page, you can see there are four different pages. It's like a book and many texts are available. So you can apply a bookmark till where you have read the book, just like you would keep a bookmark in your normal book. For using the bookmark, We are scrolling up to the first page and go to the insert menu, click on the bookmarks option. When you click here, you can write the bookmarks name. So let's call it link1, link underscore 1 and then we click on OK. This is how we will be using the bookmarks. Right now. We are first going to the second page. As you can see, we are now on the second page of our book. We select the text there, go to insert, go to bookmarks, and here we are going to use the link number one for this particular page. The second page we are calling link one, and we click on OK. Scroll down to the next page, the third page. Select the text there or select the page there to apply a bookmark to this page also. Later on with the bookmark, we can directly come to the page of our choice. So we go to the insert menu, go to bookmarks. Let's call this link underscore 2, link 2. And then we click on OK. So it is called link 2. This is the third page. Then we scroll down to the fourth page. And we can call it link 3. So we select this, go to the insert menu, select bookmarks and type link 3 as the name for the bookmark for page number 4. You can click on OK. Now we have made bookmarks for all our pages. Let us now see what cross-referencing can do. So we come back to the first page. Click on our left button of the mouse or the touchpad. So the cursor is here on the first page. Now we can go 
to the Mino bar once again. Go to insert. And now this time we are going to use cross reference. So we click on cross reference, a box opens, which has so many options, cross reference, functions. Now currently we are going to look at cross reference only. And within cross reference, the type we are looking for is bookmarks. When you click on bookmarks, you can see your link 1, link 2, link 3, all are there. Once you select link 1 and click on insert and then close, this bookmark gets applied as a cross reference link here. You can see number 2 is written, which means that it is referring to the page number 2. Similarly, go to cross reference again from insert menu, select link to, say insert. Remember, you have to press enter once after you have keyed in the first cross reference. Close, again press enter, again go to insert. We are providing cross reference to all our bookmarks. It is your choice how many you want. Go to insert, click there, click on cross reference, and this time again choose from the bookmarks option link 3, which actually refers to page number 4. Then you can say insert, click on insert, and close. So this bookmark, the cross reference is applied for this also. Now when you bring your pointer on these cross references, a hand symbol appears. When you click there, you go directly to that page, what the cross reference is linked to. Like when you point at 3, you go to the third page. So this way, you can apply bookmarks and apply cross references. If instead of the number of the page, you want to see the name, link 1, link 2, link 3, at the cross reference point, you can always choose from the view menu, the field names option, and you will see the names itself. So, this is how you will use the bookmark and the cross reference option. The next option is that of text frame. Do you know why we use text frame? Text frame works like the text box and it comes in a box in which you can type, change the line in the box and do many other things in the text frame. To know more about the text frame, let us watch this video. In this video, we will now see how we can use the text frame option. The text frame option provides us a text box which we can use according to our choice. So, on our writer page, if we want to apply a text frame, we have to take our pointer to the insert menu, click there, and then click on the frame option. As soon as you click on the frame option, you will see many a box will open and which has many options. First is type, where you can have variable sizes, width, you can choose to be automatic or otherwise. You can choose the height, then you can choose options where you can give a name to your text frame. You can also choose to protect the contents or position, like right now we have chosen to protect. Wrap allows you to opt for the frame to be in different positions on your writer page. You can also change the spacing for the wrap. Spacing from the margins that is. You can click on OK here once you have selected the type that you like. Next option is for hyperlink. When you click on hyperlink, you can click on browse and locations on your computer will open. So, whatever file you want to apply a hyperlink to on your writer page, you can select that file. 
you can scroll up and down if you want to choose it from the desktop select that file and then click on open so you will see the address of the hyperlink is applied here click on ok you can also apply different borders to your text frame so you can choose different types of borders line arrangement you can choose the line style you can again choose the color of the line and spacing of the content spacing from margins that is so this way you can then you can also apply a different background color that of your choice click on ok and you will see that your text frame has got applied now when you try to click inside you can open the hyperlink that you had connected here or the link that you had provided however if you type, try to type it will show that the content cannot be changed because remember when we were choosing the text frame we had applied protect on our content so to be able to write something on this text frame we can open the hyperlink of course by clicking on the left button and keeping the control button pressed you can open the hyperlink file and to be able to type within this you will again go to the insert option choose the frame option and now from the options remove the selection for protect so once you remove the selection for protect click on ok you will be able to type anything within your text frame so you can type inside this now you can use the keyboard and type text within the text frame so the remember earlier since we had chosen to protect the contents of the text frame we were not able to change it now if you want to apply or change this text which is appearing on the page and make it into a text frame you need to select the text on the page itself that is what we are going to do next we select the text which is appearing on the page go to the insert option again choose frame from here the frame option and apply the choices that you like for instance if you want from the wrap let's choose no wrap or optimal wrap one of these any of these which we like we've chosen through then you can change the borders you can change whether you want columns so we have selected one column on the page and then we click on ok you will see that this text that you had selected comes in a text frame which you can move to the desired location and all your text is within that text frame so this is how you can use the text frame option on your writer page let us now learn about the envelope option using this option you can make an envelope on which you can set the sender's and the receiver's address and then you can print the same. Let us watch this video and learn how to make the envelope. By watching this video now, let us learn how we can use the option for envelope, how we can make and print the envelope. For that, uh, we are on the writer page. We can open whichever file we want to make an envelope for and go to the Mino bar. Take a pointer to the Mino bar. Since we want to make an envelope first, we need to use the insert Mino and from the insert Mino, select the envelope option. Once you select the envelope option, a box opens and it gives you many options here by default the first option is the envelope so here 
in the main box, the first box that you see, you are going to type the address to whom you are sending this envelope. So, the receiver's address is on top and in the preview window on the bottom right side, you can see that this will be the main text appearing on the envelope. Down below on the left side is the option for sender's address. If you click on that and type out the sender's address, it will appear on the envelope as is shown in the preview window on the top right in a small portion. So, first you need to type the address of the receiver or to whom you are sending the envelope. So, we are typing computer shiksha and we need to type the complete address because without the complete address, the envelope will not reach the correct destination. So, we can type like in the video it is being shown, we are typing computer shiksha's address G576 Florence Homes. So, this way you can type any address that you like or the address to whom you are sending the envelope. You can use that address. If it is a big address, obviously you will be using the scroll bars to see the complete address. There is a scroll bar on the right side, there is a scroll, scroll bar on the bottom of this main address. So, you can use those and make sure that you are typing the correct, correct address of the receiver. Once you have done this, once you have also typed the sender's address, you just click on insert and the envelope gets displayed to you and you can print this envelope also and you will have the sender's address and the receiver's address on the envelope. So, this is how you will use the envelope option on your writer file. The next option is of the horizontal rulers. Do you know why we use the horizontal rulers? With the use of the horizontal rulers, you can insert different types of lines on your page in varying styles. If you like, you can use that line below your text as a heading. Watch the video to know more about the use of the horizontal ruler. Watch this video to see how the option of the horizontal ruler is used and applied. When we want to use the horizontal ruler, all we have to do is make sure that our cursor is at the spot where we want to apply the ruler. Then we go to the insert menu in the menu bar, click there, click on the ruler option, horizontal ruler option and it gives you many options available to select from. So, there are many different types of lines or rulers that you can select from. You can scroll down, select the line of your choice. It appears in a box here in the preview window when you select by clicking on the left button and then click on OK and you will see that at the place where your cursor was, the ruler has been inserted as you can see in the video here. Again, if you want to insert another ruler at a different page, you take your cursor to that page place it where you want the ruler to be inserted and then take your pointer to the insert option, click there, click on horizontal ruler, 
from the box that opens select the ruler of your choice and click on ok you will see that at that position where the cursor was a ruler has been inserted suppose you want another ruler to be inserted on the same page at a different location just make sure that your pointer is at that location go to insert go to horizontal ruler option select the type of ruler that you want by left clicking on the ruler and then click ok so you can see that the second ruler on this page has also been inserted so this is how you will make use of the option for using and applying the horizontal ruler option the next interesting option is of movie and sound using this option you can insert a picture or movie and sound on your writer page and use the same watch this video carefully to learn more about the use of movie and sound option with this video we are going to learn how we can use the movie and sound option on our writer page so wherever you want to insert the movie or a sound clip on your writer page you need to bring your pointer there go to the insert menu click there and then click on the movie and sound option a box opens which is essentially the location and you can find you should know where your files are so from the top or from the bottom here you can find where your uh, movie and sound files are you should know where the files are for instance if your files are in the videos you can click there and open the videos click on the video that you want to insert on your writer page select that and then click on open and your file gets inserted at the location where the cursor was once the file is inserted if you want to play it you can click on the image and play from there similarly if you have an audio or a sound file you can insert the same or if you have a sound and a film file you can insert that so this way you can use the movie and sound option next comes the option for file can you tell what happens with the file option with the file option you can insert any file on your page and you can also get the content or the text from the file to your writer page learn about using the file option by watching this video using the file option we can get the text or data of a file on our writer file on the current file that we are using in this video you can see the writer page is open so wherever you want to insert the data from another file keep the cursor there then take the pointer to the insert option to the insert menu click there and then click on the file option the address location box will open you can click on the address where your file is existing you should know where the file is for instance if your file is on in, in desktop click on the desktop look for your file select the file by clicking on it and then click on the open button as soon as you click on the open button the data from your 
file, other file will get inserted on your current writer file or writer page. So this is how you will use the file option. Let us now begin learning about the options of the format menu. The next option is of autocorrect. Do you know what happens with the autocorrect option? Autocorrect helps you to correct any wrongly typed words since the autocorrect feature has many alternatives for the wrongly typed word and you can choose the correct one. This video shows the usage of the autocorrect option. By watching this video now, we are going to learn how we can use the autocorrect option of the format menu. So, well, when we are using the autocorrect option, some words, common words are already pre-assigned in this, which means that if we are typing a wrong word and if there is a word which is close to that, that word will be shown to us. So, we go to the format menu, select autocorrect and we can click on while typing, which means while we are typing any wrong word, it will help us to correct the word. Go to format again, go to the autocorrect option and you can click on apply so that while we are doing this, the correction happens again and again. Once again, go to format, go to autocorrect. Now, let's look at autocorrect option in the end. Here you can see many words are there which shows that if we are typing something wrong, the correct word is for instance about. So, if we type the wrong word, the correct word will get replaced there. So, now we are going to type the word about on the writer page and you can see that although we are typed with a small a, as soon as we give the space bar, the capital A and the correct word gets typed there. Let's look at some other words. Go to autocorrect, go to the autocorrect options and let's look at some other word. For instance, here there is, whenever we type ACN, the word will become CAN, C-A-N because the correct word is CAN. So, let's type ACN. And after we type ACN and press the space bar, it knows that the word has ended. It immediately corrects the word to CAN, C-A-N. Let's look at the autocorrect options. So, there are many words here which are pre-assigned, which are given already. You can also... Let's look at across, A, C, R, O, S, S. So, if we type some wrong spelling and it cannot recognize that, it will give you a red curved line below that because it is not able to recognize the correct word. Then you need to use something like spell check to correct this. There is another way of using this autocorrect option. Let's go to format menu, autocorrect. And in the autocorrect options, you can now give any small word that you are going to type and you can replace it with the correct word. For instance, we are saying that if we type the word or the letters C and S, capital C and small s, it should be replaced with computer shiksha. So now wherever in our writer file, we will type the letter, capital letter C and small letter S, it will get replaced by computer shiksha. You have to press on new and then press on OK. 
it gets added to our category of words now if we type c and s capital c small s and press the space bar it gets replaced by the word computer shiksha this is how you can use the auto correct option in your writer page next option is that of arrange let us now see what happens with the arrange option can you tell why the arrange option is used with the help of the arrange option you can arrange your picture if you like you can arrange the picture as a background to your text or can bring the text in front of the picture watch the video to understand the use of the arrange option in this video let us now see how we use the arrange option in our writer text to use the arrange arrange happens or works on an object or an image so we are going to take from the drawing toolbar let's pick the rectangle option and drag a rectangle on the text on our page as is being shown in the video we just bring the cursor here and drag a rectangle now you can see that our text has got hidden by this rectangle now we use the arrange option to work with this rectangle so go take your pointer to the format menu bar click there and then click on the arrange option when you click on the arrange option see the last option is to background so you want to take this rectangle to the background click on it the rectangle goes in the background and the text becomes visible to you once again if you want you can see go to format go to the arrange option and this time select the to foreground option so the rectangle will become to the foreground the text will get hidden so this is how you can use the arrange option to work with your objects or images on the writer page you will now learn about flip can you guess what would happen with the use of flip using flip you can rotate your picture the picture can be rotated horizontally or vertically watch the video to see the use of the flip option let us now see how the flip option can be used on the writer page to flip an image or an object so we have just inserted an image of a rectangle or we can use the gallery option click on the gallery option and insert another object from the gallery as is being shown in the video let us select one of the themes people or you can select school related themes let's click on the globe selected then right click and click on insert and then copy and your image of the globe gets inserted on your writer page you can use these green buttons on the sides on the margins of the globe to resize as is being shown by dragging now remember that to use flip your picture or image should have been selected it is already selected now take your format pointer to format menu click on flip and click on flip vertical so the globe vertically gets flipped or it becomes top down again if you want to flip it back go to format go to flip and use flip horizontal so it will once again flip and become in the right position so this is how you will use the flip option for your images and objects on the writer page the group 
option is the next option that you will learn about. Can you tell what happens with the group option? With the group option, you can group your pictures or form a group of these pictures and can then select them and move them as a group. Let us watch the video and learn more about the group option. Watch this video now to learn how the group option is used. The group option is applied on many images to group them into one group. So to do that, let's first uh, open a new writer document by clicking on the file menu as is being shown in the video and clicking on new, new text document. Now we can use the drawing toolbar, select rectangle first and drag a rectangle here. So this is our first image. Let's select the oval tool, drag an oval like this and let's also select one of the smileys and drag a smiley here. So now there are three pictures or images and we want to group them together. Right now if we select one, only one gets selected. To group them, you have to select all of them. To do so, you have to keep the shift button pressed with your left hand and then keep clicking with the left button on the mouse or the touchpad on each of these pictures and all of them get selected. Go to the format option, select group and then click on group. Now if you see, if you drag one of these pictures, all three pictures get dragged because now it has become one group. You can apply any changes on, on any of them. If you want to apply changes, they will get applied to all three pictures, all three images because now they are in a group. For instance, if you change the outline of the picture, it gets changed for all three images. If you change the uh, gray scale or the color of the outline, it gets changed everywhere. If you change the color inside of the picture, it gets changed for all three. Remember, now they are all in a group. So if you are dragging one picture, the whole group gets dragged. As you can see in the video. So right now, all it is happening as a group activity. If you go to format, go to group and then select the ungroup function option. Now these are individual pictures. So if you select one, only one picture gets selected. As you can see, first, second, third are individually being selected and you can move or drag any of them on their own and they are no longer in a group. This is how you will use the group option on your writer page for the images. We will end today's class here. So close your file and properly shut down your computers. In today's class, you learned about some of the options of the insert menu and the formatting menu, which included section, footnote and endnote, caption, text frame, horizontal rulers, files, movie and sound, autocorrect, alignment, arrange, flip and about the group. Computer Shiksha is supported by Thank you.